last we saw Hoppity, he was in a bit of a decline and going downhill fast. You said it! Trapped in the back of Waldo Wigglesworth's snake oil van, he was approaching Hairpin Corner at tremendous speed. That's right. It looks as if Hoppity is doomed. Can't you say anything pleasant? Uh, well, it's a nice day for it. Thanks. Then suddenly the truck came up behind another car on the road ahead. A car driven by none other than one-way Windrip, the meanie who had started the whole thing. On seeing the truck approach, Windrip swore a mighty oath. Oh, fudge. Too late. <coughs> the next thing Windrip knew, he was a reluctant truck driver. Quickly, he applied the brakes. The truck slid sideways to the very edge of the cliff and stopped just in time. Boy, that was close, mister, and... Oh, oh, it's you! You bet it's me, Lippy, and we got a little unfinished business to attend to. And Windrip started out of the cab to attack our hero. Unfortunately, he forgot how close he was to the edge. But now I remember. My boy, you're safe! Yeah, but I wonder why that fellow was out to get us. They're probably after our money, Hoppity. But that's wrong, isn't it? Hoppity, my boy, as you grow older, you will learn that as soon as you have any money at all, somebody's always going to try to take it away from you. And you know what we call that? Stealing. No, income tax. Well, next morning, a dispirited Windrip was being dressed down by that mean miser, Cyrus Flugelhorn. And you call yourself a thug, letting yourself be outwitted by a frog. He got to jump on me. Conf! Found it, Windrip. I want to see results. Such as? Three heads on a platter might be nice. Now get going. And again, Windrip slithered off. This time to intercept our friends at the source of cue bald hair restorer. Ring-a-ding spring. Easy, old Rick. You don't have to fill the bottle so full. Skimp a little. Gee, Uncle Waldo, it's just water and there's plenty of it. But hoppity, that'd mean giving the suckers an even break. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, I suppose, but it just goes against the grain somehow. But just then, Windrip rolled a strange-looking object into Fillmore's view. Uh, hey, Waldo, I found a pineapple. Is it right? I think so. It's ticking. Ticking? Pembroke, that's a live grenade! Get down on that buddy! Hoppity's quick action saved his friends, but ruined the spring. For all the water was blown straight up into the air. Hoppity, there's a fortune up there! We've got to catch it! But Waldo was too late, and the miraculous hair-growing water fell untouched to the ground. Oh, I wouldn't say that. So, a short time later in the Flugelhorn mansion... Uh, Mr. Flugelhorn? Is that you, Windrip? Good heavens, Windrip, what happened to you? I got the large economy-sized treatment with cue ball. You must have used up all the cue ball in the world. All except this bottle, Mr. Flugelhorn. Ow! Oh, Windrip, you'll pay for that. And the irascible Flugelhorn began to chase his hairy partner in crime down the street. Suddenly... Watch where you're going, young fella. What did you say? That blamed kid's got no respect for your elders. Kids! And Cyrus Flugelhorn looked at his reflection in a nearby store window. By Gadfrey, I do look like a young sprout. <whistles> Does your mother know you're out, kiddo? Well, that was the beginning of a new life for Cyrus Flugelhorn. He became a bon vivant, a big spender. A sparkling wit. Twenty-three skidoo, chicken inspector. Oh, Cy, you're a cud. Well, all's well and ends well, Uncle Waldo. Hey, don't you have one too many wells in there? What next? Well, I thought we might go into business in a small way, with just a pea and three walnut shells. Now, you just keep your eye on the little pea, young man. Well... Our friends are off on a brand new story. Be sure you see the beginning of it next time in the adventures of Hoppity Hooper.